Oh, viewers. I've done it again. And this time we've actually got proper camera equipment as well. Um, welcome to Contingency Reviews, the series where we drive cars that don't fit into any other category on the channel that I've suddenly come across at short notice. This is a 2021 Kia Nero 1.6 Hybrid 2. And I've been very kindly given the opportunity to drive this by um, Kia UK and also Planet Auto who have this car on test for a week. Hello. And uh, Mr. Quirk is behind the camera. He's actually using a proper DSLR for the first time on contingency review. So I'm um, very grateful for that indeed. So this particular car has a 1.6 litre Kappa 2 engine, which is similar to a lot of Kias and Hyundais I've driven on my channel before. In this case, it generates 105 horsepower. Total combined output with the electric motor is about 140 horsepower. Now, if you go for the E Nero, that has two battery options: 39 kilowatt hours and 64 kilowatt hours. The 39 kilowatt hours, 130 horsepower. The 64 kilowatt hour has 200 horsepower. Just why, when Ben and Annabelle drove that car last year, it felt so quick. The first feeling I'm getting in this car is just how easy it is to drive and how comfortable it is. It's not designed in any way as a sports car. If you want a sports car, you can buy yourself a, I don't know, a, a Kia C GT or something like that. That would do very nicely, but this really isn't like that. It's designed as a practical family car. The sort of person who I think would, would be looking at one of these, the sort of person who'd be buying in the, in the 90s would have bought something like Vauxhall Cavalier, something like that. Brakes are very good, we've got different regenerative levels in this car. Got um, the Monvi's little paddles on the on the steering wheel, I think I can adjust that a little bit. Just got caught in traffic for a, for a second. The trim levels available in um, Kia Nero, certainly with this uh, standard version or the plug-in hybrid version are one, two, three, four, and then there were two special editions, one of the first edition when the car came, first came out, which is the first edition, and then um, there's a current special edition which is based on the two trim, which is like this one, called the Connection. I'm going to put the car into uh, the sport mode. Should we just do it like this? Oh, <laughs> I can feel the responsiveness has just sort of come in and the, the ass has come up on the screen, so the car immediately feels more responsive. Oh, there's, there's an E-Nero. Hello. <laughs> They're everywhere. Um, immediately feels more responsive and I can use this, um, this selector just going to different gears. There we are in third gear. Although probably what will happen with this is I will get tired of this quite easily and um, you know I, I don't really need it anyway so we'll probably put it back into standard mode because Mr Quirk jerked there quite a lot so we'll put that back into normal mode which is honestly it's rather how, rapid in sport. how the average person who actually has a Nero is going to drive it um, where I can see on here um, which uh, we'll, we'll be looking at in the um, sort of walk around section of the of, of, of the car a bit later on um, that um, I've got charge eco and power modes on on the screen I've got 103 uh, miles of battery range at the moment let's see if we put it into sport mode but for firms the steering up yes I can feel the steering firming up here but I'm not going to accelerate too hard because we're just going to put it in and make it charge. Do we have any regen braking? Yes, we do have a little bit. So we're just going to come round this roundabout and come back. It's quite a large one, so we'll be able to feel our handles through the corners. Yeah, there's a good amount of weight actually in sport mode coming through. We go up and round here. Although I'm, I'm going to turn that off because the, the engine 
if you have it in sport mode the engine does make quite a noise so if you put it back into the standard mode then it's a lot smoother and quieter and I, I probably recommend most of the time this is how you might want to drive your Nero. So we've uh, just pulled up in this car park to take a closer look at the Nero. There is Mr Quirk, proudly wearing his Planet Auto merchandise. This car's actually covered quite a lot of miles in the past few days, all the way down from the Lake District to Birmingham, then to Twickenham Hampton Court, and then to here in Hertfordshire. One of the things that I can show you straight away is the fact this car's got a conventional key. And I think some people are actually quite happy with that. I know plenty of viewers on my channel prefer an old-fashioned key as opposed to keyless entry. Because this is a two model, the key goes straight in there like that. The seats are part leather or part Artico leather. I put the seat in my driving position, which happens to be the same as Mr Quirk's driving position, and it seems pretty comfortable to me. It's a very conventional feeling car inside for a modern one. The one thing you're aware of, and I'll just start the car up, there we go, is this charge and, and uh, power meter here which is uh, reading really 105 miles. Obviously this is just the standard hybrid one, so there's no um, plugging in or anything like that. And a conventional dial on the right hand side. And, and you know, I, I think personally I prefer that. Even in a hybrid or electric car, I just prefer seeing conventional dials. I think that's just easier. You can see here that there's all sorts of things on this touch screen. I think this is a, um, an eight inch touch screen in this particular car. It's actually quite well integrated into the uh, um, dashboard. The one thing that I don't like about this interior is some of the materials on the inside. I mean, this is a, a nice soft touch dashboard here, but if we go to the top of the doors, now granted, something like a Sanyong Tivoli or, or, or an MGZS have hard touch plastics on the top, but this car costs about £26,000 and those. In the top of the range, guys, is there about 21 or 21 and a half thousand pounds? They don't have hybrid powertrains in them, but it just it's just a little bit annoying, really. There are automatic lights and automatic wipers in this car, and of course, things like uh, you know, Bluetooth for the stereo and uh, cruise control, which is adaptive in this car as well, which is pretty good for a car that's the lowest specification in the Nero range. And of course, there's uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I won't, I won't show you that. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that before. One of the things I really like about this car, though, is look at the physical buttons we've got here. We've got physical buttons for the radio here and completely physical buttons for the climate control system, which is a dual zone system in here. And that is fantastic. It's very, very unusual to see that in what is a fairly advanced car. Mr. Quirk's very kindly pressed for hybrid button. We can see, out of, what, out of all the travelling that's been done, which is hundreds of miles, for averaging 57.1 miles per gallon. The official figure for this car, the WLTP cycle, is 58.9 miles per gallon, which is, uh, which is pretty good. And you can see that most of it's been using the 1.6 litre petrol engine. Down here, you can see there's a button to turn your parking sensors off. There's a sport mode on the automatic transmission as well. This is a six-speed dual clutch system. It's not a, a CVT, which makes me feel very happy. There are other buttons down here as well. Probably that's for higher spec models or even the E Nero. And uh, just in here, got a 12 volt socket and two USB ports, which is brilliant. Central armrest here, which. Uh, has another USB port in it. So that's three USB ports in total in the front. I'll just use uh, this clipboard as a substitute for my secret mission documents, which are somewhere else. And just see if that actually goes in here. It unfortunately doesn't quite. The manuals are very extensive though, so they do fit in there. And of course you could fit that upright like that in the door. 
Rather like my old say at Toledo, there is actually uh, a piano black kind of finish <laughs> on the dash and it's very, very reflective. Just you obviously be aware when you're cleaning the car that you might get rid of the fingerprint. So if I shut this door here, then you might be able to see if we uh, cycle through things here that we've got things like lane keeping assist. I think if I go down like this, there we go. Um, that's to do with driver attention level, just move the camera a bit closer. Tire pressure monitoring, and if I click this, we've got all these different types of driver assistance things. We can adjust the level of driving assistance if we want. Lane following assist, of course, and other things. Just, actually, I'll just turn that back on, because that's what it was on. There we go, just turn back on. Uh, driver attention monitoring, just change that with the uh, the uh, suppressor so button now. We can have linear vehicle departure alert. That's uh, to do with the adaptive cruise control and see if you're swaying. Yeah, I think if my car was swaying, I'd probably want to know about that. Forward safety, we can actually have active assist. That's on emergency braking. Uh, we can turn it off if we want, don't want that. Lane safety, there is lane keeping assist, a so lane departure warning. So we can again, we can actually turn that off, which when my lady wife drives um, a car with lane keeping assist, she always turns it off because she just doesn't like it. And there's a button that should do that down there. And uh, because this is a, a hybrid car, there's a 12 volt battery reset switch just down there. The regen braking is done via these two paddles just here, um, it's, which is different from a lot of other cars I've seen, which might have a switch down here. But it, it's actually quite straightforward. A lot of this stuff in, in this car is, is logical and straightforward to operate, which really pleases me. So if we go down here, we can see, oh, Mr. Quirk's driving style is 10% dynamic, 34% no, normal. No, that's, that's inaccurate. There's no way... 56% economical. Wrong. No, I don't agree. Uh, the engine flow at the moment is like that. Engine temperature is good. It's funny, you don't get, you only get a temperature gauge of the engine by selecting it like that. That's interesting. Um, there's the information, we haven't gone anywhere yet, so there you go, look, over 574 miles, it's done 57 miles per gallon. Yeah, excellent. Right, and, and uh, there's the uh, uh, charge level of the battery, I presume the top bit is, and uh, there's the fuel level. So we'll probably need to fill that up before uh, Mr and Mrs Quirk go to Oxford a bit later on. Let's have a look on, on the door panel here. It's all very straightforward and nicely laid up. The controls actually feel nice quality on here, as does the door pull and uh, this piano black here. I would prefer to see a little bit of material here, but there's a lot of cars, even like a Skoda Karok, doesn't have material in this bit here, although this kind of artificial lever, I think it is, I don't think it's a lever, it's an artificial lever, is just on here, and the switches do feel quite nice. In fact, the steering wheel feels particularly nice. It looks like something out of the Kia Stinger, but it probably isn't. It's not quite the same, but it feels decent enough quality. And then, I've just forgotten to show as well, there's the button for the active cruise control there. Up here, there's a sunglasses holder, which is pretty good. Do we get lights for the... Yes, we get lights for the... Uh, mirrors here and I think that will turn itself off if I close it yes it does fantastic and electrochromatic rear mirror that is exactly the same electrochromatic rear mirror as in my Sanyon Tivoli it's exactly the same obviously there's a company in Korea that makes all those right let's take a look in the back one of the interesting things about a Nero is that it's 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 a crossover but I wouldn't say it's an SUV all the ones you can get are actually um, front wheel drive for a start and if we look at uh, here we actually got what I would say is more sort of comfort oriented tyres they are Michelin Green X Energy tyres this particular car has 16 inch wheels they're actually part plastic and part alloy which I've never, I've never seen before in a car it's interesting if we get into the back here we'll move the secret mission documents out of the way and all sorts of other stuff Apologies, we've moved in. Yeah, they, they, they have been travelling a long way in it. So that's the driving position that I would use. Mr Quirk also uses a similar one, he's six foot three. And actually the rear space is pretty good. I think there's a little bit more space in something like an MG ZS, but it's very similar to like a Sanyo Tivoli in here, although the, the, the car isn't as tall. 
again we've got this um, massive expansive plastic here which is hard but again if you look at a lot of cars like this they are similar the door pull does feel nice and so does the switch and again there's more piano black stuff but you sometimes would find it difficult to keep it clean it just attracts fingerprints and things bottle holder that's quite big that probably holds 500 milliliters at least one really weird thing about the car is it's not got a map pocket on the driver's seat it's only got one in the passenger seat which is strange although this is counterbalanced by the fact we've got these vents here and we've got a rear armrest which you don't get in an MGZS at all you don't get that or a rear light which you get in this car so we're, we're doing we're doing quite well I'm not gonna fold the seats it's a bit complicated to sort of do that um, with all this stuff in here but they do obviously fold um, and split 60 40 right let's take a look in the boot now the boot volume in a Nero it depends what car you have the smallest one is the um, plug-in plug hybrid that's only got a 324 litre boot this being the standard hybrid or what we call the eco hybrid it is 382 litres of space again we've got quite a lot of luggage in here it's, it's excellent you can dem demonstrate in here how, how you get a suitcase in there so you can get a few more of those but if you had the e Nero that has 451 litres of space and the boot floor is a lot lower. Now you, you think that might be a movable floor, it actually isn't. There's a bit of storage underneath there. So if Mr. Quite just lifts that up, you can see that's sort of what you get under there. I, I don't believe there is a, a spare wheel or anything in here. Um, I think it's a tyre inflation kit, which is pretty normal for these kind of cars really. There's no electric tailgate in this car either, I don't think. Um, but down the side though, we've got things like tethering points on here. We've got a space to oh that that's if that's if the fuel um release actually fails you can get to it manually which is good low blind in here there's the um the little boot light the only thing i don't see in here at all which is surprising is any form of sort of hooks to hang things on at all i don't think we, there are any in here at all which is uh to me it's quite surprising but uh, never mind it's quite easy to shut the boot, it's no, it's no problem. And of course this car has a reversing camera which is probably down there somewhere. Oh no, it's up there. The wiper is something, that's interesting. And rear parking sensors. Because this is the two trim, uh, there are no front parking sensors on this car. It's just the rear ones, but obviously if you want them you can just go up a trim. I think the car look, looks actually, to my eyes, better than a Hyundai Kona which is kind of similar to this it uses a lot of the same powertrains as one of these um, but obviously if you, if you don't want a crossover type shape you can just buy a Hyundai Ionic which is pretty much exactly the same as this in terms of the platform right let's have a look at the engine this is a 1.6 litre Kappa 2 engine which generates 105 horsepower coupled to a 43 brake horsepower electric motor with a combined output of 140 horsepower now it, it that might sound really weird like it doesn't add up it should be more but a lot of hybrids and plug-in hybrids do the maths on motors in that way so it's nothing unusual like that Just take my word for it current reservoir is there that's probably the, the uh, current reservoir for the battery system there there is a 12 volt battery um, as, as well which I, I think is probably in the boot or somewhere else um, I don't think it's actually. Uh, I don't think it's actually in, in this in this part, unless it's this thing here. We'll just have a look. Uh, it's a fuse box, so it's, it'll be somewhere else. But there is there is a 12 volt battery as well for this car. Um, it's reasonably easy for a modern car to get to things. Although, um, what's interesting is this car does not have a 1.6 litre conventional um, cousin at all. But th this is the simplest Nero that there is. Um, and even in the two trim, you can see there's no front sensors, although there's a big uh, thing for obviously emergency braking and stuff down there. So in terms of checking, there's you know the oil filler cap, uh, dipstick and everything like that. It's not too difficult to see things, and uh, yeah, brake fluid reservoir is just there. Right, I think it's time to go for another drive with Mr. Quirk.
Bob. So as the car has shifted into EV mode, I'd like to say thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of Contingency Reviews. This has been an absolute pleasure. I, I fully recommend this car. The range starts with actually this trim, the two, at about £26,000 with this metallic paint. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Contingency Reviews. Thank you again to Mr Quirk from Planet Auto for filming this for me. It's luxury I don't normally have. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below. Social media links are uh, down below. And um, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Across there,